five, four, three, two. Hello and welcome to the Run Life Podcast, where we run life with Christ in mind. I'm your host, Rashawn Guillory, and welcome back to episode three of Something Amazing. We're so glad you're back. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and share so other people could get the awesome news, the awesome topics, and just learn something amazing in their lives. I love you guys. How you been? I've been super good. Okay. So we're going to get straight to it. You know how I do. I ain't going to waste no time because this is a big one today. Today is a big one and it's going to be real good. So I want to get right to it. Let's pray. Lord God, I just want to thank you for today. Thank you for waking up us this morning and starting us on our way. Close in our right mind. God, thank you for being so big. You are a God of the earth. You are the God of the microcosm. You are the God of the the macrocosm. You are the God of the universe, the universes, black holes, uh, you know, just like literally everything, tiny, it'll literally little like germs. And, you know, we have like a whole environment on our skin. Somehow God, from every little tiny being to the biggest thing we could possibly imagine, you run that like flawlessly. The things that we have no clue about. I mean, you talk about multitasking, God. You are the ultimate multitasker. And then in all this, while you're securing the earth and just making sure things are going, you have us in mind, just like we're trying to run life with you in mind, God. So I thank you just for being so big, um, for being so beautiful and everything that you do, Lord God. You're just amazing. Keep being amazing and don't leave us. We need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh my God, look, I took a ride down to Julian to celebrate and I'm telling you the wonders of God. I literally like stopped on the side of the road for like so many times just to see literally the same mountain from a different perspective. I'm like, oh God, you did that. So, so cool. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's get to the news. All right. So something real sad that I thought struck a nerve with me and I was like, maybe I should talk about it because it's very poignant to where we are in the year. So does everybody know Lizzo? Lizzo is a recording artist. Baby girl plays the flute, the flute and out here making albums, being herself. Hallelujah. And, you know, she's prospering. She's better than where she was at. She really is. She came from, you know, a regular artists into this big old star but in that you know being a star you have criticism so what's been trending lately is Lizzo's explosion or not explosion I guess her emotional meltdown um on social media she's been a target for you know because you are a big girl that you should be wearing clothes and you shouldn't be exposing yourself and you know people fat shame body shame image shame all of that and then you got your people that you know she is a beautiful black woman you got those people that you know jump right on put the black thing on there and just want to hate more and people were just like criticizing well you should take this like because people are just like that and when you come into your own I mean it's like look If we're not taking it when it comes to, you know, your child being bullied, there's a such thing as like adults being bullies too. And it's old. It's old. Really, at the end of the day, it's people hating. As big as Lizzo want to be, could be, should be, you know, let her be. Her body type and what she's doing, let her do it. It's part of her persona. You know, a lot of what people do in the industry, you don't, it's not really them a lot of times. It's the persona they take. They take on a character. Let Lizzo be the biggest, smallest, shortest, whatever character she want to be and let her live her life. I'm sure her bank account 
is doing more than yours, okay? It's 11 o'clock. And that is none of anybody's concern. Let Lizzo be Lizzo, please. Let Lizzo be Lizzo, okay? Because I, I'm, I'm tired of her crying. You know, I'm, it's not, I'm, I'm tired. I've been through criticism, too. And I'm like, oh, why do people say that about me? But on the other hand, it's just like, look, people going to be raggedy. Let them be raggedy. Send them on with a prayer. And keep making your money, honey, okay? I'm all for it. Big, skinny, fat, tall, whatever you want to be, be you. This is your life. You do that. I could do with less of the flash in me with your butt. But it's... Nobody said anything when Rakishi was doing it. Okay, listen here. I'll snap. <laughs> People that loved wrestling back in the day, nobody said nothing when Rakishi came out in the thong. I rest my case. And there's a <laughs> there's another piece of news I want to get into too. Um, around this time, people are going to school, or kids are going back to school. It's school time. In the midst of the Delta variant, I know every time I get on here, I'm giving you an update on that. I feel like the CDC. I apologize, but we got to talk about it because it's literally the trending news, okay? We got the CDC, kids going to school, people still having outbreaks, getting sick, not anti-vaxxers. Oops, that's me. Hmm. I'm still getting more information before I want to give my body up to science for, for all that stuff. So you guys pray for me and my efforts to get my <laughs> my information to protect my own family, okay? On top of this, in New Mexico, another kid shot a kid. This was on the 14th of, of August. I'm like, bro, you just got in school. Why are we... Put your mama's gun up. Nobody wants your mama gun at school. Stop shooting. Stop that. Y'all kids, y'all getting upset. Stop it. I swear, you know how like people evolve? This demonic action of literally this manifestation of killing people at school is a thing. Please hide your weapons. You know, parents, you guys get in trouble for that. You know, I know about the rules of owning a gun and you got to go lock that stuff away and make sure your kids don't can't just easily access it. Why are they easily accessing it? That is part of your test when you sign up to get a gun, especially in California. Put these guns up so these babies ain't getting them and shooting other babies. Lord God, we just started the school year barely. Mine ain't even hit the first day, but we're going to bless God. We're going to keep praying for Lizzo. Keep praying for these schools as we send these kids to school and keep praying for these angry kids that have like emotional ups and downs that they stay guarded up in prayer. Because, look, the enemy is out. And he don't like it. He don't like it. Let's get straight into the topics. I got a lot. Let's eat. Topic time. What is it? It's intimacy. Do y'all like that? I tried to give you <laughs> for people who watch or for people listening. I definitely stared into the camera on that one. I was like, intimacy. You know, I got my lip gloss on and my wing liner. We intimacy today. All right, definition of intimacy, close or familiar friendship. Write that down for people that like to take notes because I have a whole board of notes. Okay, let's go. Close familiarity or friendship. Did you know intimacy is more than sex? Ah, did I just blow your mind? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad I did because it blew my. The Lord spoke to me and was like, mm, intimacy. I was like, okay, God. Brought me a two page. I was like, oh, and I did my homework and I put my homework together and boom, we got a podcast, baby, on intimacy. So I'll give you a little tidbit of my life. I'm at a point where I have stopped all sexual intimacy, period. I don't need it. Don't want it. I choose you, God. Lord, I choose you. That that's that's about all I got capacity for in my life or trying to get my life together. It's okay. You know, sometimes the D needs to go sit down somewhere. Praise the Lord. Um, Don't say that around the kids. But sometimes the D needs to go sit down somewhere. And then you do too on the other side of the room because Jesus needs to be in the midst. No, God was really just informing me on there are different types of intimacy. Growing up, nobody told me there's different forms of intimacy that you can experience people at. And it's not just sexual. Mm, did not know. And if you don't know now, hey, hallelujah, now you know. 
if you don't know, now you know. And we're going to talk about four forms of those intimacies, types of intimacy. All right. First, experiential intimacy. Write it down. Experiential intimacy. Experiential intimacy is more about teamwork. You usually experience this type of intimacy when you're like church, school, work, even like during emergencies. Okay. One example that I thought of, I was on the road today. Like I said, Julian, of course, somebody got in an accident. I was like, my God, you know, immediately started praying because I just saw wheels in there. I was like, oh, I hope, I hope everybody's OK. God, you know, guide the whole situation, make it OK. But it was something about the people that were on the road that knew what to do. And they were like, OK, we're getting together. And they experienced this teamwork that, you know, was only for that situation that brought everybody together. They were interested in helping somebody there was a teamwork that formed like yo we got to save somebody's life this is like straight up humanity and survival kicking in we're having this moment together where we're going to be intimate and work together for this certain type of good and I was like you know what God that is so beautiful that even in crisis or teamwork at work don't you got them work homies some of those people are real efficient and some aren't they're not part of your team right you be like eh, you be trying to work around them but it's something about when you go to work, you guys got a system. You could tell when somebody's out of whack. You can tell when a customer didn't talk to, to somebody wrong. You guys are having like a moving, working intimacy, like those work relationships you're not supposed to have. That's a different type of intimacy. But if it was a little bit more friendly, it would definitely be experiential intimacy. All right. One scripture that really spoke to that type of intimacy we got to go bible all day ephesians 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers now this part of ephesians is really referencing like how the body of christ is all working together everybody has a different part but we're all on the same team we're all going toward we're all having the same type of experience of trying to bring people closer to God help them give them hope you know all those things basically what Jesus did in his life you know we're working together toward a a like outcome experiential intimacy number two emotional intimacy I like saying intimacy in this mic it's doing something to me I'm sorry this ain't even the one that we we really know about. Emotional intimacy. This intimacy really is verbal in a sense. It's more so verbal. This is when you could share to, you know, from sister to sister, something, girl, there was a boy and uh, he was just in, you know, sister to sister, brother, brother, man, I was at the game, man. We lost that game, man. And I was just so sad we lost that game, man. I was, you know what? And little Pookie didn't even catch the ball. See, that's that. He was emotional because I had lost the game. But, you know, you're like lamenting onto somebody. You guys are going back and forth with your emotions. And in that, you know, you remember those conversations. And that's somebody you view yourself sharing with all the time. You know, we don't always have that close friend where we could just be literally emotive with. Um... But some people are lucky to. I've had a friend uh, friend for 25 years. His name is James. His birthday is actually this month. Happy birthday, boo. We've been friends for 25 years. We've been friends since kindergarten. We were in kindergarten. It's like, yeah, you want to be best friends? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, we're going to be best friends. And we literally like chose to be best friends forever. So I love you, dude. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. I love you. We definitely have emotional intimacy because he didn't lay 25 years of his life into my ear and it's been like wow <laughs> but I love you dude all right so my scripture to reference emoto emotional intimacy was Proverbs 27 verse 17 this one's the New Living Translation as iron sharpens iron so a friend sharpens a friend that was for you boo that was for you James we definitely have been sharpening each other it could be more so now we get to be adults and sometimes you know you lose track of time and like, dang, I ain't talked to you in a few months, dog. You all right? You breathing? Okay. You know, moving on. But yeah, we've definitely we have sharpened each other since five to now. It's It's been, it's been sharp. Praise the Lord. <laughs> all right. My third point is, I don't know why I opened my mouth and it didn't come out. <laughs> Intellectual intimacy. 
the sharing of, you know, ideas, uh, bleh, girl, what is wrong with your tongue? Ideas and perspectives, excuse me, ideas and perspectives. When I think of these things, I think of like Socrates and uh, Gandhi, and I think of Martin Luther King, Gandhi, probably not much so, but, you know, I think of, um, I think of bell hooks. I think of like just raw intellectual, just yes, Lord, you know, I have a thing for just knowledge in general. Love it, love it, love it. I actually have like an intellectual intimacy friend. Like we only talk about smart stuff. Uh, it's rarely gossip. If the gossip is, is connected to something, it, it just be like, oh, you know that girl, mm. You know, and then we're like, okay, but this idea is going to be so good. Like everything is like brainiac stuff with us. And I think oh, I love that relationship so much. It's probably one of my top five relationships in my life that I love is the intellectual intimacy I get to share with this person. So thank you. I'm not going to say your name, but you know, you are. Yes, yes, yes. Keep writing those books. Also with pastor stuff, you know, you get to share with your pastor or share with the deacon and y'all like go toe to toe with the word. I think that's so cool because you get to like, flex in a friendly way it's like sparring it's real friendly you fighting it's like bang 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 but it's like yeah okay okay i see you intellect absolutely love that hence a podcast and all this information my eyes just lit up on that third one but for that scripture i also highlighted again proverbs 27 verse 17 iron sharpens iron so a friend sharpens a friend we sharpening each other with what we got, you know? So awesome. Goodness. You learn so many new things when you start talking about really brilliant stuff with your friends. You know, cut out gossip and talk about business and arts and creations. You know, do that stuff. I love it. I love it. Creator right here. We're creating. All right. Last point. The one y'all know about, the intimacy y'all know about is sexual intimacy. I said that's so gross. <laughs> sexual intimacy i know that's gonna sound so gross in the mic it's all right but most times that's the only intimacy that we've known when we're talking about oh i'm trying to be intimate it goes straight there like oh with who no uh uh girl you know what i'm saying so sexual intimacy is like engaging with somebody sensually mm -hmm. Or sexually. The sensual stuff will lead you to sex. So y'all bets to be quiet and sit down somewhere. Opposite rooms. Remember? The D got to sit down somewhere. Then you do too. But on the other side of the room. Okay? Keep it safe. <laughs> I can speak on it because I'm going through it. It's okay. So you guys know what that is. Sexual intimacy. I don't want to explain it. I don't want to go there. Y'all are here because of... Mm, because of sexual intimacy so you know praise the lord for that and then then, then stop after that because i don't want to hear it. i don't want to hear it <laughs> all right my scripture for that was i know when we get up in the pulpit you don't know nobody really tap into this into this reading but a song of solomon mm, the song of solomon verse one i mean chapter one verse two let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth mm hallelujah for love for your love is better than wine i gotta read that one more time for myself okay because you know i didn't cut that last the last point out sexual intimacy is something i'm not experiencing right now so i'm gonna read it for myself um song of solomon one verse two <laughs> let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for your love is better than wine Hallelujah. That's Bible. That there, right there, is Bible. <laughs> so let's do a quick recap. I really enjoyed this intimacy one. I'm sorry, a little bit too much. But look, God gave me a word. And I wanted to speak on it. I wanted us to know more than just sexual intimacy. I wanted you to know more than that. So when you want to experience intimacy, a close familiarity or friendship, it doesn't have to cross those lines of doing something wrong or doing something immoral, right? I really do get, um, I'm going to use this word, but I'm going to put it in a different context. I get aroused when I am intellectually intimate with somebody. 
it's not a sexual arousal, but if you go back and look at how I talked about point three, intellectual intimacy, my eyes lit up because it's something I love that I'm passionate about that literally moves me, but it doesn't move me in the reproductive way. And still, as we go through this life, we don't always have to be stimulated sexually. You know, there's so many other forms of intimacy that can make you feel whole to where you can still preserve yourself for when you want to get married in the future. If you in between booze or, you know, trying to be, <laughs> look, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're trying to like cleanse yourself, if you are just trying to see God right now, because that's all you need to see. These things will help you. You know, the enemy knows what to do. The enemy knows like our little, oh, I could get you there, girl. Look, I'm about to send you a fine man that ain't worth a cotton picking quarter. But that's not everybody. So don't don't come for me. But in those ways of feeling valued or feeling something within that's not physical, experiential intimacy, emotional intimacy, intellectual intimacy, that can be your go to. And you can still feel whole and beautiful and wanted still in those forms of sharing and loving somebody in the correct biblical relationship type way. Okay, had to share that had to major jewels, major jewels here. Take these home. Look through or go through this again. Write it down. Teach this to your kids because you know, they, I didn't know. Hello, 30. I'm like, you know, I, I really didn't think this was a type of form of intimacy. Share this with somebody. That's what we're here. It's what the podcast is here, cast is here for. Share with somebody and make sure, you know, they have new information. All right. I love you guys. I tried to speak real quick because that was real heavy. I hope you're blessed. Like, follow, subscribe, share because somebody needs this information. And I'm going to see you back for the next episode, baby. I love you guys. Bye. Run life.